I think we're online now. Hello again. Uh, welcome to the Edmonton Politics Hangout for uh, Thursday, October 3rd. We're glad you could join us tonight. Um, we're going to go through some introductions for our team here, and then we'll quickly uh, get to our special guest. So my name is Ryan Hassman. I am Twitter tweeting uh, at Ryan Hassman. And um, over to you, Max. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Mac Mail. I'm Master Mac online on your, your favorite social media service. Uh, Master Mac on Twitter, and uh, I also run ShareEdmonton.ca, which is uh, aggregating some stuff about the election together. And uh, I'm Dave Cornway. I, uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Dave Cornway, and I also write the uh, the political blog DaveBerda.ca. Yeah, so um, just a quick introduction. Tonight we have a very special guest, one of our six official mayoral candidates, and uh, one of the ones that I have sort of deemed to be in the big three. Um, he is current city councillor for, <clears throat> excuse me, for Ward 11, um, Kerry Diot. Now, Kerry, are you with us? Are you live? Yeah, um, I think you've got audio, but uh, it seems like we've got a bit of a, a video um, situation. Okay, well, we hear you, so just carry on, and um, the yeah. picture will come in. No pun intended, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you probably want to know a little bit about me. <laughs> yeah, please, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, yeah. why you're running, what your background is, and then we'll exactly. get to some questions. Well, as you know, I'm a longtime journalist. Uh, I've worked in radio, television, news magazines, including a uh, CBC TV affiliate back in Ontario. I've written for McLean's Magazine. And uh, probably more importantly to most people locally is I've covered uh, Edmonton civic affairs for about 15 years or so. Uh, I was also the uh, Edmonton president of the Canadian Association of Journalists for many years. That's a, an association that uh, basically uh, sticks up for the, the, the public's right for more access to information, trains journalists, has seminars. I was also on their national board with uh, folks uh, from the Toronto Star and Fifth Estate, so it was, a, it was quite, a, quite a, a great organization. I moved here in 85, and you know, it's a typical story. Um, I didn't want to come to Edmonton. I, uh, people, I, I thought some of the same cliches that, that, that this town is wrongly put, put down for. You know, it's too cold, it's too far north, it's too boring, and I did come here, and uh, I figured I'd, st I'd st you know, spend two years here and then try to get on with the Toronto Star or the Vancouver Sun, but I fell in love with this city. It's a way better lifestyle. It's a better cost of living. It's friendlier. And I used to talk to my friends in Toronto, and they're just miserable with their commutes and uh, so forth. So, you know, basically it's a city where who you are and, and what you do matter a whole lot more than who you know and where you're from. And, you know, I've certainly seen those cities, and I've lived in them. This is a, a great town. I, I ran for council in 2010 for Ward 11, uh, one handily over five other candidates and um, you know as I say I love the city of course nobody would uh, run for mayor unless they love the city I suppose but it, it's going through a real un a unprecedented boom and we're attracting people from all over the world it's very exciting when I've gone door knocking I swear that every 12th door or a person live at the door 12 to 15 is somebody who just moved here so it's just booming and I, I just want to keep it going in the right direction I, uh, as you know, I actively engage on social media. Uh, long done that. I'm, I'm a communicator by, by you know, it's my DNA. So I, I, I like to ask people what what they think about issues. And uh, at the door is what we're hearing right now. Uh, and I welcome anybody to come door knocking. The big issues are fix the roads. Very basic. I've, I've heard it from motorists to cyclists to motorcyclists. They'd say fix the roads, and that's that's a, that's got to be a top priority. They also are saying the arena deal, the financial side of the arena deal stinks, and I agree. Um, I, uh, I, I was the only one of three candidates, uh, the three major candidates, to vote consistently against that because it's not a great deal for taxpayers. Going forward, uh, I will be, the, I believe, the only person who will, who will stand up and make sure and insist that not another nickel of tax money goes into that deal if it goes into overruns. Uh, I'm also hearing concern about debt and taxes. And uh, the, uh, the, the debt has uh, it's gone from $400 million in uh, 
20, you know, from 10 years ago to fast approaching 3 billion. And it, and it worries, worries people, it worries me. Uh, taxation, uh, we've been having double the rate of inflation tax hikes for many years now. 10 years, it's gone up 50%. And you know, the, the thing that gets me is it hurts the people in our society who can least afford it, especially seniors, people on fixed incomes. So those are the big issues. Um, and uh, I'm certainly glad to uh, uh, to be here and discuss with a wider audience uh, some of their concerns. Uh, I'm, I'm active on Twitter at, at Kerry Diot. Also, there's uh, we would count uh, Diot for mayor. And uh, www.carrydiot.com for more information and background. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, what we're going to do is continue on for one question while we wait to see if the video trolls work themselves out. And if not, um, maybe we'll try dropping and re-adding. Okay. But we'll just pretend it's a radio show, I guess, for now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to start it off. So... I think the question, Carrie, that we have for you is, or, I mean, one of the first questions, seriously, what are you going to do about the potholes? I mean, I think every Edmontonian, as you said, um, knows about it, is angry about it, has a horror yeah. story to tell. But what I want to know is we live in a place where the temperature swings 60 degrees Celsius. So what can be done? What's the problem and what's the solution? Well, I think that... First off, we we have to we've got a problem with arterial roads. Twenty percent of them have basically failed, and this year we're we're only putting in um, nineteen million or sorry twenty one million into rehab. Uh, you notice Argyle Road; it's got to be stripped right down to the bones, right? And you see that they're doing that, and we've got many of those failing roads. So that that's that's something that we've, we've neglected. That's in our capital budget. Next year we plan to only spend fifteen million on arterials. So uh, I don't like it uh, when Edmontonians are damaging their vehicles, and it's certainly not making us look very world class uh, when you know we we have third world streets. And I do think that we are a world class city, by the way. And uh, I, it, it ticks me off when people say that we're not, and we have to try to aspire for more and more. Um, so we, I think we've got to attack that. Um, we also have to learn, I think, to be aim to be world leaders at this. We're a northern city. We, we are a smart city. We've got brain power here. We should be inventing um, solutions that, the, that we could export to the world. And as far as the, uh, the, you know, the operations budget and, and patching, you've got to patch just to make the road safe, but we've got, to, we've got to get down to the foundations and rebuild some of these streets. And it's going to cost money, quite frankly. Um, Mac, what would you... Well, Carrie, I think it would be great if we could get people to see you on the Hangout. So yeah. why, don't we, why don't we try one time at least to have you drop and rejoin here and see if okay. we can get the video going. And if it, yeah. it doesn't help, then we'll, we'll treat it as a radio show. All righty. In the meantime, Dave, I heard you can juggle. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no it would be entertaining to see you try, I think. I, I, I don't have any magic tricks or any, uh, you know, any... Any jokes or anything? I'm just, I don't, I don't have anything. Isn't live broadcasting but, fun? Yeah, but if, if um, oh, here we go. Okay. We're back. All right. Is that in the picture? It looks like we've got movement. Yeah, yes, we do. All right. Great. Mission accomplished. Okay, let's hope it uh, sticks around. All right, so let's. You uh, let's we do not have a problem after all. <laughs> Good, good. <laughs> All right. Um, one of the other things you mentioned in your in your introduction there, Carrie, that I wanted to ask you about then is the the arena. Yes. Um, so you've pretty consistently said you don't like the the deal and you voted against the deal. Yes. But I think you've said that you are in support of actually having a new arena, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. And so a my, downtown arena at that. And a downtown arena at that. Okay. Yeah. So my question is, would you do anything if elected as mayor to either change the deal or stop the deal or or is it too late now? And if that's the case, then then why mention it? Well, you know, it's uh, that's that's a great question, and uh, I want to be really clear on this too because I think uh, you know it's it's important. Uh, clearly, I've been outvoted, um, and we've signed off on that deal right now. So, in my rationale, we would it would be a very costly thing to 
to start to scuttle right now. But as as mayor, I would push to make sure that if it goes into overruns and think of projects, any projects that that haven't gone into overruns, that no more tax money go into it. So we'd have to get our other partner to step up and show that uh, you know we've, we're we're borrowing. The city's borrowing 542 million for this deal. So if if it goes over, taxpayers and, and I'm hearing it strongly at the doors. They're saying not another cent, and they're very very uh, firm on that. And I, and I agree with them. Dave. Sorry, sorry, I was on mute. Just a quick follow-up on that, uh, if yeah. you don't mind. Um, the the arena is a guaranteed maximum price, though, is it not? So well, actually, it's that's what it's supposed to be. But we will not have a final price until probably January, most likely February. So as you know, at these early stages, you can be plus or minus up to fifty percent. It's it, until you have that final price. So my, I, I certainly hope that. All these predictions are right. I sometimes wonder um, how we picked that price. It started at $450 million. So I think there's some padding in there right now. 480 it's up to. Pittsburgh built their arena for uh, just over $320 million. State of the art, best arena in the world. Um, and um, so maybe, there, maybe you know, I, I hope it doesn't go over because, you know, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I'm not keen on the, on the funding side, but, you know, um, we're on the hook for the 542 million when we borrow. So, I, as mayor, I certainly will do. You know, I certainly hope that everything goes as predicted. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So, just one more follow-up for me, and then I'll throw it over to Dave. Um, you, you mentioned, uh, in particular, a downtown arena. So, I'm, I'm curious. Do you see the arena as being uh, vital for for the ongoing revitalization of downtown, or is it one of those nice to haves for for downtown? Well, I think it's. Um, Downtown, as you know, is really turning around. You look at some of the, the skyscrapers going in. The uh, uh, it, it'll obviously it, it, it will have to help. There's there's no question. But uh, downtown's come around quite a ways, and I certainly remember it. And you probably do from the days when uh, you know West Edmonton Mall, Mall was built, and it was a ghost town downtown. And uh, we at one point, or way before I was a councillor, the we had to actually pay developers four grand to build uh, condos. You know, it's like, we'll give you four grand, just please build a condo down there. So I, I think we've seen some amazing changes already. And obviously arena's, an arena is going to, going to make a difference. Okay. So I, I share a lot of your, same, this, a lot of the same concerns you have, Carrie, about, uh, about overrun, cost overrun for the downtown arena, uh, because it is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And a key pillar of, of your campaign so far has been talking about city debt and that the city has too much debt. So mm -hmm. I guess my, my question to you is, do you think there's a right level of debt for the city to carry? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's kind of a question. That we, what we've got to do as a council, once elected, get together and look at our list of capital projects and, and our, our wish list of capital projects and say, because we've got billions of dollars on that list. So we've got to say, is this a want? Or is this a need? What is more important? And I, I certainly know from Edmontonians, the roads are the most important right now because they've been long neglected. So we've got to find money for that, and then we've got to find out whether there's 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 something on that list that's less important. I think that's that's the way we go about it. Um, I'm not saying stop borrowing all borrowing, but at the same time. Um, you know, people are worried about the debt, and you know how the economy can change in, in this province. So we might say, well, we've only borrowed half of, of what we, we can legally. I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, if my credit card, if I've got $30,000 uh, limit on my credit card, I don't want to rack it up to the full max. Even half kind of makes me uncomfortable, and things can change. So I think, you know, the way Canada came out of uh, the recession so well was that we were fiscally responsible, more so than the U.S., where banks were, you know, loaning money, handing it out like, like it was literally money was growing on trees and people were racking up debt. So we, I think we, we, sh we should learn a lesson from how Canada has, has weathered this. And I, and I think that our government is, uh, you know, is the federal government, love them or hate them, whether you're a, you know, a, a Harper fan or not, they've done a great job in being fiscally responsible. And I, I think we owe it to the, 
the citizens of, of Edmonton to do the same thing. It's their money. It's not my money. It's their money. We're all Harper fans on this panel. No, right well, I, I, I know that I mean, that comment makes Ryan really happy. <laughs> if, I see him smiling. If, if I can just have just a quick follow-up. Uh, you mentioned, I mean, you know, you're hearing at the doors that roads are, you know, roads are a big priority. Uh, what would you consider like a, a less priority in terms of the city going into debt to build? Well, I guess, again, we've got to sit down as a council and decide that. Um, I, I certainly know that when people are running in this election, they're hearing the same things at the door as I am. I guarantee it. In fact, um, I would invite any, any of you guys to come out and, and hear the doors. I had a CTV camera crew following us the other, the other day. And again, that's what people are hearing. Um, I think if you've talked to a few um, people who are running, you'll, you'll, I, I think you'd have to agree. And I'm, I'm a populist. I, I think that if people are, are calling for something, we should, we should stand up for it. We're, I'm the civil servant. You know, um, and I think a lot of politicians forget that. Okay, uh, we're going to do one more round of our panel, and then we're going to turn to Twitter for some questions. So if you're watching this on the Hangout, please make sure you tweet questions to us at uh, YegVote, and we'll make sure to get them to Carrie that way. Um, but in the meanwhile, so <clears throat> Carrie, part of what you've um, sort of been known for on council in the last term was having a dissenting opinion on quite a few items, um, which, you know, is good or bad, depending on your point of view. But if you're elected mayor, how will you ensure the council can build the consensus and work together um, to pass things that you're going to need to have passed? Because in our system, the mayor, unlike a premier or a prime minister, you know, the mayor really is just one member of, of council, one vote. So what's yeah. your plan for building consensus? Yeah, well, I mean... Um this vote really is a plebiscite on those issues that we've just talked about, the debt, the, the, uh, the financing of the arena, the, uh, the taxation, and roads. It really is. And uh, the people who will be elected will be elected on the same platform I'll be elected on. So we, we will, <laughs> you, you uh, ignore the public at your own peril, as you know. You know if uh, Everybody knows politicians have to pay attention to the public. Uh, that that uh, keep you know gets them elected and, and if they want to stay elected and I strongly believe in in listening to the public people will come come around I, you know I've been asked that question a fair bit you know are you how can you lead are you a leader you weren't uh, you know you weren't um, you were sometimes the lone wolf or Linda Sloan and I were the lone wolves against things mm. but let's put it this way I. I announced that I was running for mayor before the current mayor said he was going to retire. Mm -hmm. And the two other people running against me said that they would not run against him. So I think that's real leadership. It truly is. And I'll, I'll brag about that. And uh, I'm a leader. Yeah, you touched on something that we've actually talked about in other hangouts. And I think it's an interesting point that at the municipal level, it's not necessarily left-right. It certainly is populist versus establishment, and those are my words. But uh -huh. yep. you know, we've heard from candidates, even on Twitter, you know, talking to people like Mimi Williams, who um, basically her her position on the arena and your position on the arena are very similar. Maybe not the actual position, but the messaging around what you're hearing, what you think the voters want. So mm -hmm. I wonder if you have a comment on you know, how people perceive you versus Karen versus Dawn and right-left and conservative and NDP and all that stuff. And, like, what is a Kerry Diot voter in this election? Well, you know, um, it's obviously, uh, I think the word is populist. Uh, I have people on my team, uh, everyone from the NDP to the Wild Rose, because I have to build coalitions, of course. Um, people... Uh, you know, we have to work together. Everybody knows there's some politics. There's some, you know, you can pretty much tell what slant some people are on council. But you know, we all have to, we all have to take uh, to get together on certain issues. And um, this, uh, those, those four big ones are are the ones that keep coming up again and again and again. Um, I, I am, I am uh, certainly fiscally. Uh, prudent, or what's the word? A good fiscal steward. I believe in that, but I'm also socially small L liberal. 
because I have stood up for things that, such as you know, the Elements Dance Festival. They were they were ready to, to shut down Boondang as a business and drive them out of town. And I don't think that's fair. I think that uh, that's a, a thriving business. Uh, it's a younger crowd than than you know. It makes adults a little nervous, maybe. But we're world class, and we we have world class um, uh, dance festivals now. Um, so I think maybe. Maybe it's up to me to get that message out more because uh, there are stereotypes out there, of course. I work for the Edmonton Sun. That doesn't mean that I believe everything that the Edmonton Sun writes, and it's clearly a, a right-of-center newspaper. I had free reign to talk about anything in the Sun, and I, I certainly wandered. You know, I had topics uh, all over, and I did a lot of... Uh, you know, I helped a lot of people with problems with, uh, with government. I helped people... You know, it, it's... Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it, I've got to get that message out, truly. Okay, any follow-ups, Ryan? Are you good? No, over to you, Mac. So, uh, kind of a related question, Carrie. I want to ask you about um, motions at Council and, and that sort of activity. Um, I'm, you know, probably a, a data guy. I like to look oh, at yeah. statistics <laughs> and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and, I, I, you know, I look at the motion st stats, and I just noticed that you had... You know, far less activity the numbers show than than some of your colleagues on council, yeah. and so I'm, you know, kind of related to to Ryan's question around consensus. I'm curious to yeah. know, you know, what you've learned from the last three years that you think you can take forward as as mayor to be able to actually, you know, put some of your ideas forward and and gain some some momentum for them. Yeah. Well, yes. Um, I I often. Uh, I had a different vision than, than the current mayor, and I, I, I proudly say that. And he is—he uh, was very strong at getting people to fall into line and vote the way he wanted. There's no question. Um, The—I'm uh, not that way. I mean, I—I I believe in voting on conscience, uh, voting for the will of the people, and um, the—you uh, know—it's—it's it's a whole new ball game in the next election. It's. Uh, there were motions that I made at budget time. And for instance, I made one uh, to cut their printing budget by 10%. Now, I don't know, uh, I, I think it's pretty well known that uh, Councillor Iveson has, uh, you know, green leanings. Certainly, he's, he's been endorsed by Greenpeace. He didn't vote for that. Now, I think that uh, in, in situations like that, sometimes it came down to petty politics. And I made some very good motions that were just shot down at budget time because I don't think uh, I, I don't think that people wanted to give me credit. Why would not an environmentalist vote to cut our printing budget 10%? We could do it in a heartbeat. Do you have some uh, some things in mind that you would put forward? Uh, you know, when you if you if you were elected as soon as you were in there, I know you've blogged about a couple of things. Do you maybe want to touch on some of those for us? Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, I think there are a lot of efficiencies at City Hall. I think that we. We have to be able to start treating people like clients, not pests. Um, you know, the uh, issues like snow clearing. We should be world class at that as well. Um, and um, some of the motions. One of the things that I was I was talking about to uh, uh, the journal editorial board today was we we should start partnering more with people, such as uh, on rec centers. We 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 had hadn't built a rec center for a long time, and and ten years ago or so, we decided to go it alone, build Terwilliga Rec Center, beautiful facility, no doubt. But you know what? We cannot afford to go it alone and give rec centers in in every community in the city, like in in big swaths of communities. Before we we would partner. You look, you see our partnership with the Kinsman, the downtown Y, the Don Wheaton Y. I think we spent less than ten million dollars on that. The Go Center. Is a great facility, and that was a, a, a four-way partnership, three levels of, levels of government as well as U of A. So we we've, we've got to start looking for partnerships, looking to do business smarter. And you know, it drives me nuts when um, uh, there are good people at city city hall. There's no question, but it drives me nuts when they say we've always done it this way. Um, uh, and I think we can we, we can work smarter and and be smarter. So. On that note, then, are you proposing like we follow a P3 model for further rec center development, or what would you do? Well, you know what? If you want to call it a P3, it's uh, it's a partnership. It's a partnership with charities, which is great. I think uh, we've talked about doing that very similar kind of partnership with the Galleria project, as being a partnership with the U of A, with developers, etc. Uh, P3s uh, in some 
in some minds, it, it's a dirty word. But you know what? Look at the P3 that Vancouver uh, did on its uh, Richmond line. It's, uh, it, it's, it's 24 kilometers, spur line to the airport, a P3, well run, it's SkyTrain, it's underground, and the city of Vancouver paid $29 million. Now it helped that they were hosting Olympics, no, no doubt, but you tell me, anybody who argues that P3 doesn't work, um, I, I, would, I would beg to differ. I'm with you. <laughs> I know you are, Ryan. <laughs> on that, on that note, yes. All right, Dave, over to you. Yeah, uh, Kerry, I guess, um, I guess, kind of, kind of touching on what on uh, something that you just mentioned about, uh, you know, sprawling communities or you know, new communities, Edmonton growing and 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 building uh, building rec centers in them. Um, I know one of the issues that uh, some candidates have talked about uh, is providing. Um, you know, looking at looking at the city a little differently, and in terms of providing housing choice, uh, you know, within from the suburbs to the urban core, uh, in terms of allowing more infill, so more different types of development in some more mature neighborhoods. And I'm I'm sure you've you've heard. I mean, you may have heard this in in uh, in, in um, some of the neighborhoods that you represent in Ward 11. I know there's some really uh, mature neighborhoods there, and there's always some tension with, with communities when new housing comes in and when new infill comes in and whether it fits, you know, the, the character of the neighborhood and whether it's the right fit. So, I, I mean, I guess my question to you is, is what, what, what would you do as mayor to ensure that there's housing choices enhanced across the city and including, uh, you know, the, those different types of infill in mature neighborhoods? Yeah, um, that's, that's great because, let's face it, um, Mature neighborhoods rock, and and even from from of course from my fiscal perspective, it makes complete sense. Uh, the the infrastructure is there. I, I would I would really like to consider and 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 get some plan together to uh, have incentives to do infills. And I don't know the details. Um, you know, we haven't roughed them out, but I'd certainly be open to to ideas such as tax breaks for the time being uh, until they're sold. Uh, we have to be careful, of course, because uh, you know other people are going to say, "Hey, how about me?" But it, it, clearly, that's that's a, a great direction. And um, part of the problem, I guess, with infills is that they, they get rather expensive. So then you have to start thinking, "Well, a young family can't can't always afford that." And then you, I, I certainly can't deny them the the right to uh, their first home in the suburbs either. I don't think. So. I guess on on a, on a similar topic about housing, but shifting gears a little bit, um, I'm uh, I'm sure you've uh, you're you're well uh, you know all about what's going on in Twilliger. I mean, it's been yeah. all over the news for the past few months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, that's one of the big issues. That this kind of when you talk about the core of the city and the suburbs, this is an issue that we all have to deal with. And in the core of the city, some of the neighborhoods like Macaulay and 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 a couple others, there's been a, a moratorium on social housing. I think I think. It, I think next year it's it's up, um, and so the, you, we've seen a number of of of, uh, of housing projects like this housing first project in Tewilliger so uh, come up and that was controversial in that neighborhood. So I guess my my, my, my two questions are uh, where do you where do you, where do you stand on on the moratorium in the uh, city center in the central neighborhoods, and how do you feel about uh, moving to that type of housing first projects, those type of those type of apartments and and and, uh, and living complexes into suburban neighborhoods. Yeah. Well, the first question is certainly the uh, moratorium. I, I've I've door knocked in there, and and uh, they do have a, a whole lot of um, you know they they've got a, a whole lot of agencies, and they're they're a little overloaded. And I don't blame them. There, you see some infill going on there, and they're, these people are very brave to be building in some these neighborhoods, and I, I think it's only right. I would certainly consider extending that, uh, that moratorium uh, as mayor um, and, and encouraging that. At the same time, Terwilliger is is a pretty far-flung neighborhood. I don't know that that's the right place for uh, uh, to put uh, that the, the, you know to put uh, a social program like that. It's too far away from their support. Right. <laughs> Sorry, that's my dog. Somebody's sicking the dogs on me now. Come on. <laughs> no, he, 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 he's the wiener dog, and he weighs about. <laughs> yeah. so you don't have to but but uh, no, I mean they, they don't have the they don't have the supports there. So those it's not fair to the to the people who are being put out there because they don't have their their counselors. They don't have their. It's just it's a little 
we've got to find a middle ground somewhere. Um, and it's probably not quite so far flung. Uh, you know, maybe it's, I, you know, I mean, who, who wants to start naming neighborhoods? But it's got to be close enough where the supports are, are, are somewhat close, at least. Okay. All right, so I'm going to jump into a Twitter question then. Um, so there's one from, uh, from BT Edmonton this morning. Uh, I think it was this morning, anyway, recently. And they, they asked, does Diot need to broaden his platform? So I think, um, you know, over the last week, uh, you know, I've been putting my, my latest update together, and your two primary competitors seem to have went on a schedule of posting something every single day. Uh, and it was a little bit of a quieter week in comparison for you. And so I'm guessing, I'm wondering, is that intentional? And do you think that you need to start talking about more than the big four topics? Well, you know, I think, you know, I, I own those issues. It's clear. Um, I, I know that Councillor Iveson at, at one forum said something to, to the effect of this election is not about the arena. It's not about debt. It's not about potholes. Well, I, I'm sorry to inform uh, Councillor Iveson. It very much is. And in fact, now he's talking about a com comprehensive plan to, to fix the, uh, the streets. And that's good for him. You know, that's good. I mean, I'm glad he's coming around to my way of thinking. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't need to throw a whole pile of, of, of news releases out there and hope that something sticks. And, uh, you know, I know that the core issues are there. Uh, I've talked a little bit more about my, my vision today to, to partner with uh, uh, charities and so forth to do rec centers so that we can be, you know, we can get more bang for the buck. We still get the rec centers we, we deserve. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that uh, I think is, is uh, a very win-win uh, situation where we can save money and get more bang for the buck. So, uh, but the pillars remain. I, 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 I'm hearing it from the people. So I, I think that sometimes some politicians get into a situation where they don't feel that they're they're covering enough, so they start throwing things out there, and hope, hopefully something sticks. And I don't I don't operate that way. Okay, fair enough. I want to get into another Twitter question. Then this one I think is meant to be uh, maybe sarcastic or a little bit funny, but it's from uh, Jeff underscore on Twitter, and he says, "Please ask Kerry Diot if he will commit to replacing northwest directions attached to every street." with more useful directions. <laughs> and I think maybe we can broaden the question a little bit. And I'm curious to know your thoughts on, uh, let's say, wayfinding. So I know there was a report that uh, came to council a little while ago about uh, wayfinding downtown and, you know, replacing signage and maybe embracing some some technology yeah. kind of things. Any any thoughts on that? Is that something you're in favor of or, or opposed to? Well, you know, it's... It is kind of funny when I've I've looked up address and I think okay no uh, or something you go on Google or whatever it's like oh you got to put in northwest northwest it's nowhere near the northwest um, and uh, I I would love to have a different system I, I lived in Calgary where it was a quadrant system so you, you know, I'm not saying it's better or worse but it does seem kind of ridiculous that three quarters of the city is the northwest now I'm not a geographic expert but uh, you know and I and I have to admit I've got a bit of a, a bad sense of uh, 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 when it comes to road directions, my partner always uh, points that out. Um, but yeah, I, th I think if there's a way to do that, I'd certainly love to figure out a way to do it. And uh, there are people who are probably better uh, experts in that topic than I am. And I would, uh, I would certainly like to see their solutions. And wayfaring, yeah, it's, it's important. Um, I've noticed in this city at times that um, uh, even, well, even with my bad sense of direction, but you've got I think you've got to look at a city from a tourist perspective and I think sometimes you'll get directions and, and say that wow well, like, like this is this I can't figure out where I'm going here and so we, we've always got to look at signage um, and uh, and treat it just like uh, if you were in a city for the first time would you know where to go well you know part of the problem is we didn't start at zero zero we started at a hundred and a hundred so my sister owns a house with the southwest address, and it's going to happen eventually. It is confusing. Um, it's definitely one of those things that newcomers to the city have a hard time wrapping their head around. But, you know, the issue is when you start at 100 and 100, eventually you're going to reach zero when you're counting backwards. So if we could go back in time, maybe the quad system would work better. But, um yeah, this is one of those things that I think, you know, actually, speaking more broadly, Edmonton city planning is a little bit questionable at times. It's difficult to get from the West End to the downtown. It's difficult difficult to get anywhere. 
um, to the downtown. And I've lived in other cities, and you know, we've all been to Calgary and other comparables. And it seems like the planning could have been better. But sitting here today, you know, one of the issues that was in your survey um, was the white mud, and you talked about maybe increasing the speed limit. So is that something that you would actually put forward as a motion? Well, actually, you know, on that. Um let me finish first with the directions thing. I mean, I love ideas. I like to I like to see new ideas come in. And I I actually lived in Calgary for a few years, uh, and uh, initially I found it confusing. But their system probably is better. I remember once as a journalist, I was sent off to a fire, and I said, "Okay, I'm here. There's nothing. It's a parking lot. Are you at such and such southeast?" Uh, no, I'm at the southwest. But then once you get used to it, it's a great, you know, it's a good system. And on the white mud, I, I surveyed people I, um, just to see, get an idea. I, I surveyed them on uh, on the, the photo radar, uh, on s increasing the speeds of the white mud. I, I, I would be open to it. Uh, I think it was built for, uh, I remember years ago, the engineers told me it was probably built for 100K at least. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I think I could handle it. I, I would. The, the question is, some of the other drivers could they? Maybe I've got my doubts there a bit. So it looks like we're back to radio mode here. Yeah. Um, I think maybe because it worked last time, okay. Carrie, we're going to ask you to drop out and come right back in yep. again. All righty. And we will. Uh, we will do that right now. Thank you. Guys you. Keep talking. Fill that at that dead air. Okay. We, we will. will. We will song and dance while you're gone. So I'm not going to juggle, but uh, I'm going to encourage people to go to my blog, DaveBerta.ca, and download the uh, the Yeg Vote bingo sheet and bring it to the forums. Yeah. Yep. How come so, Urban Chickens wasn't on there, Dave? Well, uh, you know, <laughs> if, if it's popular enough, I'll have to, uh, have to do a second version of the bingo sheet, and I'll definitely put Urban Chickens on the bingo sheet. <laughs> hey, you know what? Um, uh, I, I'm all in favor of pilot projects, truly. Why not? Done elsewhere. Um, I know people go into a bit of a flap in it. and <laughs> I'll, I'll stop with that. The, the <laughs> all okay. right. So it appears, it appears to be working again. Good. We're good. So I, I, I'm, I'm not going to ask you a question about urban chickens, so if you want to talk about urban chickens, you can. <laughs> Uh, but but I am going to ask you a question about, and this is something that uh, you you talked about at the begin bit of, about at the beginning of the campaign and before council uh, had its last meeting, and that's uh, sewer systems in older neighborhoods. Now I live in an older neighborhood, and I I have the unfortunate uh, un unfortunate news of of telling everybody that my basement flooded during that uh, one of those large storm uh, rainstorms we had in in August. The sewer backed up, and the same happened with every house in my neighborhood. Uh, so. I mean, there's obviously issues going on with uh, with with sewer systems and drainage systems in in a lot of mature neighborhoods in this city. So my question is, is what would you do as mayor? Like, what would you really do uh, to either fix the, the sewer systems or bring them up to, up to speed, up to up to modern standards? Well, just just a, a quick one, Dave. What neighborhood? Just just curious. We're we're in Highlands. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, we've got a we've had a report. Uh, I know my my ward. Uh, Parts of Millwoods were just they've been hammered over the years. It's just so unfair, and I, I think uh, initially the city turned and and the administration was was telling homeowners, no, you've got a bad uh, backflow valve, you got to grade your lot properly. And I remember that these these poor people, they, some of them have been flooded. This one guy I talked to 14 times over the years, so they are getting increasingly upset. And I, uh, I kept pushing it. At first, Drainage didn't want to meet with these people, and I said, look, you've got to have a public meeting. This is the, the messaging that the city is putting out on this is making people angry, and I don't think it's authentic. So finally, after many meetings, uh, they, have, they have come up with a plan. It's going to cost tens of millions of dollars to fix Millwoods, and uh, we obviously know that other neighborhoods are in, are in a similar situation. So again, you get back to get back to uh, the, the, the core services, we've got to fix those. We've got to find that money somewhere to, to fix those because it's not fair to have people's houses continually flooded. I mean, it's, that, it's such a, it's, it's, it's horrible and it, they don't deserve it. People do not deserve that. And at, at some points in Millwoods, people are telling me they can't even insure their houses anymore. Now that's, I mean, it's your biggest purchase of your life for most people. Anyway, certainly for me. Um, 
And uh, when it gets to be that bad, we've got to find a solution and, and fast. And and I would support fast tracking those solutions on that. We've uh, we've got to get her done. So well, oh sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, I was going to say. I mean, you're you're right. It's I mean, it's it's something that needs to be done, and and it is something that that's going to cost a lot of money. And I guess where 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 would where does where does the city need to go to find the money to to up to upgrade these systems? Well, once again, Dave, it's. Um, you look through, we've got that long list of capital projects, a very long list, and we have to, again, I hate to, uh, you know, I'm repeating myself so, somewhat, but we've got to go through that list and find out what is more important. Is it saving people from being flooded in their homes or something else? And I'm not going to start going through that list now because I'd have to do it with my new council, and we will have to make that decision, and there might have to be some hard choices, but I'll tell you, I, I'll stick up for uh, uh, spending when when on, on um, something as unsexy as sewers when our when when people's houses like yours are being flooded. Period. Yeah, thanks. I was actually going to go to a question that you've kind of addressed, but you know, Shelley Decker from McEwen University um, asks, and I think it's still worth asking. So, council keeps this is her question. Council keeps hiking taxes. Don and Karen have big spending plans. How can you keep taxes low and fix infrastructure? Good question. I've been asked that a lot because, you know, again, I think we go back to the, the, the running the city more efficiently. We don't challenge them, unfortunately. Um, let me let, let me just give you a really quick example, and it was in the journal. This guy had rep, uh, invented this application for potholes and for uh, to uh, GPS. You know, you you, you can. GPS stamp a, a pothole or a graffiti, and the, the 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 transportation department was quoting us saying, "No, you know, we've got a system. We've got our system. We've got to go out, send out a pot. Uh, you know, the, we we go out and check out all these reports of potholes. So you've got a pothole middleman. I mean, literally. And you know, we can't. It doesn't fit in our system. So." Uh, you know, we've got to make sure, like, come on, with all the potholes this spring, guys, go out there, take take the word of the citizen, and if, if the pothole is, like, two inches too small to fill, there'll be a bigger one just around the corner. So, I mean, it's things like that, and, and that's just an example, but, you know, we could save, just think of uh, just reassigning those pothole inspectors to maybe actually filling potholes, and and there are, there are many examples there like that. We, we, um, uh, we have to operate more like a well-run business, and well-run businesses don't automatically get five percent budget hikes all the time. And, and how many how many people, working people, do? It's I, I truly think that we 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 need that. We we have to instill into into our, our our city staff that we are serving citizens, and we have to do it efficiently. Um, I mean, I've worked in private enterprise, and. And I'll tell you when when they came to to us and said you're 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 losing ten percent of your budget and you're can you're going to you're going to continue to put out the same product and uh, that's how it's got to be. So you, you we found efficiencies. They can be found. Uh, my two opponents have consistently voted. Uh, for those those two and a half time uh, increases, uh, two and a half times the inflationary increases, they gave administration a you know a uh, the the the, the uh, condition or they they gave them permission. Oh yeah, uh, this year come back and we'll do a budget at five percent increase. Why? Nobody gets five percent increases anymore. I mean that's that's in a different land. I voted against that. So administration goes in. Of course they're gonna. They're going to find ways to jack up the budget five percent. My personal office budget has been fifteen to twenty percent under budget every year, and I think we could challenge if I can do that on a tiny little budget. They can do it on bigger budgets. You 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 consider that in order to save just eleven million dollars out of a two billion dollar operating budget, you you know that would save you you save eleven million, you decrease the taxes one percent. That's not a lot of money. In a big budget like that, so it's it's the will. We need to, as council, we've got to we've got to have the will to say, look, you've got to do things more efficiently. And I I, I know that, I know that they're there because I spent three years at, at council and, you know, ten years before as a uh, covering the covering city hall, and I know where the waste is. Well, I certainly agree with the idea of. Uh challenging them to be a bit more efficient. I like that that perspective. And so let me segue into another question about efficiency, maybe. Uh, I want to ask you about public involvement, which is uh, something that's really important to me. 
Uh, and I think some of the members of council currently feel like it's a relatively inefficient process and I think members of the public feel like it's an ineffective process, like they don't really get an opportunity to um, to have their voices heard or to have their say on something or it's too late in the process. And one of the things I like about your term on council is you've been a very accessible counselor. I think people have been able to get in touch with you if they want to ask something. Um, so I'm curious about your ideas for you know public involvement and is there anything you could do as, as mayor uh, if elected to, to kind of change the way that happens at the city of Edmonton? That, that's you know excellent point, Mark, and that's another thing that I've been hearing at the doors. So I guess my image has frozen again, um, but uh, I'll answer this question, and we can try uh, try to revitalize that again. Um, but yeah, it, yep. you know, it's, it's far too much right now. I, I don't think it's early enough, and it's and it's not really a pu you know public involvement. It's, it's it's the city too often comes up with a plan that says, here we've got this idea we are going to do A or B. We are going to do this and, and build this housing or whatever it is. Now you can tell us what color the uh, the fencing should be. I mean truly. I, I've seen it I've seen it many times. I think that we have to truly involve the public more earlier on and, and they're feeling very frustrated. I've gone to those meetings where and I, I know that maybe people have different views of the of, of bicycle infrastructure. But there people are furious that that they say, well, I didn't know it was coming to my street. Oh, well, we did a, a big survey in 2009, and uh, you know, the public was consulting. We we did the we did all the you know the consulting was done through some consultant, and but that that's not really hearing people. It's it's going through the motions and saying we've hired the consultants, we've done this, but but truly, when when the the, the rubber meets the road, these people are not feeling heard, and and I you know I I I, I agree with you that. We've got to do a far better job of that. Okay, so should we try the, re the rejigging on the uh, the live stream? Well, why don't we do one more Twitter question? One more. Okay. And then we'll refresh because then we'll get into some fun questions and we okay. want to make yeah, the, you, you the video for that. Perfect. Right. Sorry. So, Ryan, did you have another one there? Oh, um,. Well, one of the questions that I've seen come up a few times on, on Twitter anyway is around um, one of the, your opponents, uh, and I don't have a specific Twitter question in front of me, but one of the, your opponents, Don Iveson, put forward something um, around municipal taxes that your other opponent, Karen Lee Vivici, reacted to. And I think it was the first time we saw one of the three of you kind of go after the others. And I'm just curious to see if you have any input on that, either on Don's policy proposal or the fact that Karen felt compelled to respond well, or what. That's, that's a good question. I mean, I think if uh, Don Iveson had done his research, he'd certainly know that an Alberta Liberal MLA made a similar proposal back in 2009. And the PC government basically defeated the bill. Uh, in uh, the, the bill in question and has really made it clear that it's not considering a provincial uh, municipal tax sharing at, the, at this time. So under the existing laws, um, you know, my opponent's uh, income tax sharing scheme would not be legally allowed. Um, and we need, you know, what we need are concrete solutions, not, not pipe dreams on, on something like this. I mean, yes, everybody hates property tax, I'll agree. But, you know, we, we have to deal with the system that we've got now. So would you work with the mayor for Calgary, and I don't want to presume on who that will be, um, maybe around approaching government and doing some sort of Manitoba-style income share, income tax sharing, or do you well, think we start? I, I certainly, um, everybody wants, everybody always wants more money, and, and that would be nice, But and, and I would certainly push for more money from the province. It's a no-brainer as mayor, of course, and from the feds. But let's let's deal with reality right now, uh, Ryan. We both know that both those those levels of government are seriously challenged, and and also when you think of it, there is only one taxpayer. So I think that the the, the correct thing to do is deal with what we've got, get our own house in order, and um, and and be more efficient. Um, I know that governments would probably spend every nickel of, t of tax money if it could tax unlimitlessly. Is that a word? Unlimitlessly, I guess so. Um, so let's deal with the with the real issue here. 
Okay, so we're going to ask you to drop one last time, and then we're going to enter our lightning round a little bit more fun or quick. Anyway, hopefully it's fun for you. <laughs> so sorry about the gremlins, Kerry. We appreciate your... Uh, well, it could be, you know, just slow connection somewhere. I thought we were pretty quick here, but who knows? This is what happens with the live broadcast. This is the fun of uh, experimenting with new technology. Yeah. Well, I had someone come on, or we had someone on Twitter saying they couldn't connect with Android, and I don't understand that either. But mm. okay, um, you're back. Yeah, we're back. Okay, so let's just go in order. Mac, I hope you're ready. Uh, sure. So we we've got some quicker questions, some fun questions. The first one I want to ask you, actually, since we've already mentioned signs uh, today, what did you think about the uh, the 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 new Welcome to Edmonton signs that some pranksters put up this week. Well, at least they had a sense of humor. I'll give them that. I mean, you can never endorse vandalism, but right. yeah, at least they're clever about it. <laughs> All right, Dave. Okay, uh, uh, my, my question, what, uh, what should we do with the talus balls? <laughs> <laughs> we should get that giant baseball bat that's uh, on 118th Avenue and have a little batting practice. <laughs> 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 that's pretty good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to ask candidates about things that real Edmontonians care about. In this case, it's the Edmonton Eskimos. Um, what, <laughs> do they still? Do they still care about them? Uh, what the heck happened? And does Cavus Reed still have a job if you're the GM? Well, you know, I uh, I I love watching the Eskimos even in their current position. But I I know I'm no expert. I'll, I I I'm not the uh, the guy to ask about that. But I I wouldn't wish ill on anybody. But obviously somebody's got to straighten out that squad. Yeah. All right. Uh, I have to ask you this, Carrie. Forgive me, but <laughs> bless me, Father. A, for I sin. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of uh, parody accounts, and I'm really curious to know what you think about the Carrie Diot's hands account. Well, you know what? Um, obviously, um, I'm being taken seriously because I'm seen as a threat, and it's and, and, and you know it's it's mildly amusing. Uh, again, sometimes it's funny. Um, but do you read uh, it regularly or? Not really. I mean, I you know Twitter can be so seriously negative. I, I think it shows that people are paying attention to me, and that that's a good thing. I, I think that uh, if somebody's not lampooning you, you're not being hurt. So I, I don't know if you're a, I don't know if you're a sci-fi fan or not, but I think it's, we asked your one of your opponents this question when we had him on uh, earlier. So I think it's only fair. Uh, Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Trek, the original. Yeah. Okay. Did you do you care just a, a quick twenty-second uh, uh, explanation as to why? Well, you know, I I grew up on those, and uh, <clears throat> they were so campy but funny at the same time. And uh, you know, uh, Captain Kirk, uh, you know, so over the top in his acting. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, it really entertaining. And I, I was a huge sci-fi fan uh, as a kid. I wrote, read books voraciously, and uh, we even watched Lost in Space. Anything with space was exciting, right? Especially as a kid growing up and uh, watching the moon landing and all of that stuff. It was it was a, a real charge. Well, now I have two questions. So oh, no. <laughs> as a follow-up to Dave's, we asked um, Don the same thing, and we're all dying to know. And I think you kind of answered it. Kirk, Picard, or Han Solo? Oh, Kirk, all the way. Kirk, all the way. <laughs> Classic Kirk. The, so, leader, the leader, and, and you know, uh, not the logical guy, but the, the, the guy who gets it from the gut. <laughs> um, the EQ, not the IQ. That's good. So I'm going to set up a joke for you, and you can give us the punchline. Um, so Mayor Kerry Diot, Mayor Nahid Nenshi, and Mayor Rob Ford walk into a bar. <laughs> That's so, it? What That's happens it? next? What happens to what? What happens next? What happens next? Well, um, <clears throat> I think uh, Rob Ford gets into a fight with the, uh, the bartender, um, I uh, lead uh, uh, Nahid off to a corner and, and we have a discussion about how we're going to get more money for Edmonton from the provincial government. Well, You're quite the politician good. tonight, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well answered. 
Okay, another one that I'm going to ask. We've uh, we've talked about colors a few times on our on our show, and I did a blog post the other day actually about candidate colors. So you're green and and black. Any rhyme or reason behind the color? Well, you know, it, actually, we started out. We initially toyed around in 2010 with um, green and blue because it was kind of a nice thing, and we looked at it and said, "No, it looks too wild rose-ish," uh, and we sort of dropped the blue. So we uh, we we've got a color that's green. It's it's a good. It's a strong color. Uh, it doesn't uh, seemingly align with with any major political party, which is which is key, and um, it's it's a warm color, and it's actually my favorite color. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> there you go. And we pick up the occasional uh, green vote from it as well. Mm -hmm. which is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what, one more question uh, for me: um, What what have you realized since launching your campaign that you didn't anticipate? Well, I, I just think um, <clears throat> just the uh, the the interest. It, it's just so big. It's it's you know it's. Um, uh, the volunteers are are amazing. How they come out, how much work they give to the people I didn't even know have come forward and said, you know, I just want to help. And they'll come in and they'll do everything from make funding fundraising calls to to uh, scrub uh, floors, just like I will, by the way. And uh, it's it's an enormous undertaking. It really is, and it's uh, it's a, a big learning experience at times. Uh, lots of lots of hard work. Incredible amount of hard work, long hours. Uh, but I, you know what my favorite is? It's the door knocking. I love hearing things straight from the people, and that's when you really get to know what people are thinking. And you know what? I think the the problem overall with politics is that politicians get divorced from the people, and they start saying, "Here, you know what? I'll tell you what you you, you should think. If I just talk really slowly, you'll get to love high taxes." And uh, you know, I, I just I you know I. I I really really love door knocking. It's a, it just, it's a Zenish thing where you don't have to worry about whether your shipment of pamphlets came in or whether your signs have been torn down or whether. So that that's that's a that's a big thing for me. It's a, it, it's 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 great. It's a it's a charge and it's a lot of work, but uh, I'm I'm it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. Great, that's a good answer. Yeah, and I think a lot of the reason why you're the current counselor is because you door knocked so hard in your first campaign, and I think you were well known for that. So, um, you know, we've talked about a lot of fun things tonight, and I think you've shown that you're a good sport, and that you know it's it's fun to have a little bit of of character and excitement in the race. Do you have any kind of concluding uh, remarks you'd like to give us? And I mean, you're speaking directly to the voters here tonight, so. If you wanted to just end on a couple things, and then we'll do our uh, exit, and that'll be a night. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, I'll keep it brief. And it, it was a lot of fun, guys. Thanks. You're very uh, you're very good, all of you, and I respect you. And, and I think it's so good that you're involved because you're drawing in people who normally might not be involved. They, they don't pick up a newspaper and read it anymore. Uh, and, and, and congratulations very much on you guys getting people involved, getting online and getting them out. I hope you get them out to vote. And I hope you get them out to vote for me, preferably. But, you know, getting them out to vote is key. And I, I'll just summarize, I think, my, my, my take on things. I mean, I think that a vote for either one of my opponents is basically a vote for more, four more years, like the last ten. It's a vote for the higher for higher taxes, more debt, crumbling infrastructure. It's a vote for the same special interest leading us in the wrong direction at City Hall. Um, you know why vote for me? Obviously, I'm the only candidate rep representing real change. I'm the only candidate committed to to uh, t fixing our our city's very foundations, and the only candidate you can count on to protect you, the taxpayers, uh, from arena cost overruns. Yeah, and you certainly know why. Um, you know, a, a vote for me is a, is a vote for change, common sense, and um, I'll be the mayor who listens. And I think, uh, really, you know, the, the 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 mayor who cares about people and what they think for a change, and a, a mayor that will make this city better, and I and bring it to to new heights of prosperity. And that's my unpaid political announcement. And and again, I really thank you guys for doing this, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And you're certainly uh, bringing some good questions, and and uh, but fair questions. So, thank you very much, and thanks to everybody who tuned in. Uh, they can go to carrydiot.com and certainly get more uh, information. 
Uh, Diot from Air is the Twitter handle, and at Carrie Diot is another Twitter handle. So thanks again. Okay. Well, thank you, Carrie. So just stick with us uh, when we click the offline button, and we're just going to do a quick, I'll do a quick wrap up here. So again, I'm uh, Ryan Hassman at Ryan Hassman and RyanHassman.com. Um, beside me is at Master Mac, and he runs a variety of websites. So I'm not sure which one you'd want to favor over the others, Mac, <laughs> but uh, you can catch us on Twitter and go from there. And at the far end of the panel is Dave Cornier, a.k.a. Dave Berta, and he's at Dave Cornier um, or DaveBerta.ca. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in. I think there's a mayoral debate in person happening this week. Mac, what day is that again? Uh, the next one, actually, I think is Monday at uh, lunchtime. Is that right, Carrie? Oh, but I, I mean, I'll, I'll have to look at my uh, sched here. Uh, you can uh, here, I'll, plug, I'll plug my site, Ryan. You can go to share. Uh, uh, and there's there you a go. calendar of events there. <laughs> there you it's go. Also on my website. Also on CarrieDiot.com. CarrieDiot.com. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, and we look forward to hearing from you next time. And uh, stay in touch. Good night. Thanks, Good all. Night. Thanks, Carrie.